Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. I'm your host, Gretchen Flesha. I'm so excited. I am here with two amazing, lovely women from another happy day, Jesse Holder Tordola, got it correctly, and Nora Pfeiffer. How are you doing, Jesse and Nora? It's so nice to be here. Thanks for having us, Gretchen. So for of us, uh, course. Well. I am so happy you guys are here, and I am going to dive right in. Your film, it really strikes a chord with so many people, and I love that it is um, kind of defined by a postpartum depression comedy, because like like I was saying, I just think this is so interesting and something different that maybe people haven't heard before. Can you kind of take us into what that means and what this film is all about? When I uh, had my first child, um, I certainly didn't have time to write uh, a script, but I was clocking how uh, challenging the experience was becoming a mother right. and also how uh, surreal and absurd it was. So I was either <laughs> crying or laughing, and that's the energy and tension that I wanted to capture in another happy day. So it wasn't until my daughter was a little bit older that I could actually start to craft this story, um, but I wanted to uh, slow down time and, uh, and give the audience an opportunity to really see what it's like to become a mother. I love that. So it's really an insight, a little peek into what it's like. And I love that you said so often I think we kind of uh, fantasize and like over... I tend to look for the good in everything, which is beautiful, Oh, right? I was so excited to become right. a mother. I had the highest expectations. Right. But then you're able to say, hey, it is beautiful and it's hard. Exactly. And that's beautiful in its own, in its, its own self. Both. Right. It's absolutely both. And okay. this is the movie that I wish that I had before becoming a mother. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have um, had some insight and perspective to how the challenges <laughs> yes yeah well and everyone always says right like there should be a book you know you can't write a book about this but you're showing women and men i'm assuming because yes. both are seeing this absolutely like, this film right. is for fathers as much as it is for mothers, mothers. or people who my husband would like to be hysterically when he first <laughs> when he first saw it because he obviously i met nora when i was quite pregnant with uh my son okay. and so read the script on the verge of becoming a mother and thought it was hysterical and so I jesse you were literally reading the script as you were pregnant. Oh, we were in a lab together, a filmmaking lab called From Script to Pre-Production, and we had the assignment to read all of the other scripts in the lab, and Nora's was the one that like resonated with me, and, wow. that, that, and I couldn't stop laughing, and then I had my child, went through my own postpartum experience and postpartum depression, right. and we kept working on this movie during that time, and kept working to, to put the team together to make it, and so by the time it was done, and my husband sat down and watched the rough cut, he was like crying laughing. He, so this I is like, that. for men men that might be watching this interview, this is for you as well, you should, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, I love this because it was very serendipitous that you guys met in this moment. It was meant to be. Absolutely. And Jesse on set, you know, pumping on breaks. I mean, and, and I literally there with my one-year-old out of town, like with a, a breast pump strapped step to my chest as I wander around checking things. <laughs> I love this. So you literally, you are the movie. The movie is you. And, and Lauren Lapkus, our lead, who yes. is hilarious and such a revelation in this role because we're seeing a side of her as an actress that we haven't seen before. I love that you said this because that, I want to dive in on that moment. Oh my goodness, we all know her from, uh, well, many things, but Orange is the New Black, of course, right? Yeah. So you think of this, uh, she is powerful, um, very kind of edgy and batty woman. Yeah. And now it's like you're seeing her in a whole different light, which I love. Absolutely. It's vulnerable, it's real, it's still all of the funny that you can always expect right. from anything Lauren is doing. Right. But with this, she was just so profoundly pleasant to watch work in this because mm. she was herself a new mother at the time. Her, her daughter is about the same age as my son. Okay, how um, wild is that? D d <laughs> truly, like this yeah. is magic and mothers is, is this whole movie. And yeah. watching her just kind of process and go back through and the way she connected with our onset baby. Yeah, and it was really beautiful to witness. I love that. And it was important that. for us to have mothers in, in, the, in these lead roles on the film because uh, we wanted to provide childcare for anyone working on the film, which we did. We committed to providing That's child care cool. for the I parents. I don't think anyone would think about that. That's amazing. <laughs> so we were, um, we were lucky enough to be in a fiscal sponsorship relationship with a nonprofit called Full Spectrum Features, which allowed us to pursue not only equity investment in the film, but also issue-based donation. Full Spectrum Features. features. in Chicago. Oh, wow. And so through uh, a wonderful contribution by Liza Yintema and her husband Mark, we had a sponsorship for a child care initiative, which 
it's been really a hallmark of how we've talked about this movie that we were this tiny little indie that could right. with this little budget and we managed to shoot eight hour days, which is unheard of in film, fund childcare. Wow. And if we can do it, anyone can do it. And I think it's a testament to priorities. And because women and mothers were making this film, those things simply were priorities and they were baked into how we made it. I feel like this film, I don't feel like it is not just a film, a movement of sorts. That's it's, our hope. If we yeah. can do it, we want to set a precedent. It's a lot of planning, and if you make it a priority, you really can provide these uh, support nets for people so that right. you make space for people to work, and you signal to people, this is a place where we want you that. to work. There's room here because we are anticipating <laughs> your childcare needs. And even if you're not a parent, it's still great for work-life balance to have an eight-hour shoot day. I think it really requires people in leadership who are ready to listen to the concerns of the people that are working with them, to listen. We had an art department come to us in the first two days going, I know that you want to shoot eight hours, but we're still working these crazy hours. Right. Okay, well, we're going to find the money to hire you another person. Wow. And then if it's not money, I mean, it's from the, what was the phrase that I used forever? Lean as a style. Mm -hmm. So it was months of pre-production of me and Nora sitting and having meetings talking about how do we bake lean coverage and the creative of the film into a style and a visual language that maximizes the time that we do have. And that, it's, it just takes people in these positions who are prepared to have those conversations over and over and over again. You guys, I am so excited about the film, but you two could rule the world. I'm feeling this moment. I, I'm here for it. <laughs> we would like that. We think yeah, we have some answers and you. solutions. <laughs> um, so now the postpartum part. Mm -hmm. I know it's not always easy to speak about. Um, we were speaking a little bit off air that it is just recently, I feel like that people are maybe coming out and being being able to talk about it and saying, this is how I feel, this does happen, it is okay to talk about, let's normalize it. How does that play into the film? Well, that's such a great question. There has been a stigma for so long and I think we are starting to shake that off yeah. a little bit. Um, but still, I think postpartum depression has this connotation of being a very extreme um, uh, and uh, diagnosed mm -hmm. uh, taboo, taboo mm -hmm. um, medical condition. And postpartum depression looks like a lot of different things. And my own personal experience, I wasn't diagnosed with postpartum depression, but I didn't seek a diagnosis. I was too private about what I was going through. Right. Um, to, uh, to and, and also thought, people have it so much worse. I'm fine, but I'm think fine. It's huge. Yes. And yes. I was diagnosed, but it took um, seven, eight months after my son was born because those silly little surveys that they put in front of you at the doctor's office sound insane. Like, the, the, it's just the, the questions are so strange and banal, and you're like, if I answer this completely honestly, people in white coats are going to come take me away. <laughs> yes. And yeah, you just don't, you don't do it. I mean, mine was mixed with like weird birth trauma and stuff, so it took right. six took months before I could articulate that. And what you said about it manifesting different ways, I think the public perception of postpartum depression is being shut down, crying all the time, being right. over in a corner, being completely disconnected from your baby. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it is for everyone. I mean, you were incredibly connected with your first child. I was, I was, I was, I connected with my baby, but I personally was was having such Just a struggle in, inside and such an identity crisis and shift when you become a parent. Mother I connected or, with or my father, son, yeah. but didn't want to leave the house. The world felt incredibly dangerous. Like right. so, it, just, it's, it looks very different. For and a little bit awareness and community can make a huge difference, which is which is our hope for so the film. This is brilliant because you said, obviously being mothers, mothers are really gonna relate. I don't have children, but I am relating to you because of stories from my mother and my friends, et cetera, and men as the parents and men as mothers yeah. as well. I mean, yes. being maybe the main sole Absolutely. provider as a mom and a dad. Right, so right. We all come from a mom, a mom yeah. who succeeded or failed by her own standards to, to whatever extent in mothering us. We all have a mom. We all, as women, are negotiating in our lives what our relationship to the notion of motherhood is. Are we going to be mothers? Are we not going to be mothers? What does it mean for your career if you have a child? Yes. And men have to have a connection to that reality, too. They have moms, they have wives, and they have to figure out <laughs> in this new generation of millennial hands-on dads, like, what's that going to look like? So well, this really is about everyone, I think. Mm. Guys, I am so very excited to watch this. We have the trailer. Let's check it out another happy day. You came across town for me to hold your baby? No, I came across town for you to hold me. What? I'm kidding. Kind of. I, I thought you were here to sell me Tupperware or Mary Kay. Um, do you need Tupperware or Mary Kay? I like the samples. 
Oh. Oh, yeah. Right. You know what? We should probably get going anyway. Goodbye. Okay. Um. It was lovely meeting you, Miriam. You know, if you need anything... I don't. You do, remember? What? You need someone to hold your baby. I can hold my baby. I'm not your mother. Thank God. 